Welcome back to English 4.0, the radio show. Let's go! Advanced. Yes, it is time for the advanced portion of the class here in class 61. Thank you for joining me. My name is Kyle Miller, and uh, as always, we're going to get things started with a little review of class 60. If only we had more time, we could talk about so many things. Yesterday, if only we had had more time, we could have practiced more examples if we had had more time. If only. Ojalá. If only. It's like saying, I wish. I lost my keys. I wish I hadn't lost my keys. If only I hadn't lost my keys. I broke the glass. If only I hadn't broken the glass. So here we are in the past. Well, the action is in the past, and it's an action that we regret doing or we wish we hadn't done. Okay? Or something that we wish hadn't happened. Yeah, they lost the match. Oh, man. If only they hadn't lost the match. He dropped the ball. If only he hadn't dropped the ball. Yeah, if only he hadn't dropped the ball. That's what the Boston Red Sox always said. If only he hadn't dropped the ball. There was a famous play in, in the 1960s where uh, the first baseman for the Boston Red Sox, which is a very famous baseball team, in, a very famous baseball team. I, I'm going to say, I don't know if it was the late 60s or the early 70s. I'm not, I'm not an expert baseball historian, but I do like baseball. And there was a player named Bill Buckner, who was the first baseman for the Boston Red Sox. And there was a play where the ball was hit. It was a very routine play, a very simple play, where this player, Bill Buckner, he had to catch the ball and walk. The ball was rolling on the ground. It was a very easy ball for, for a professional baseball player to catch. To catch the ball and walk over about two meters and touch first base for the final out, which would win the World Series for the Boston Red Sox. Now, the World Series is this, they call it the World Series. It's kind of funny because really they're only... American and one Canadian team that compete for the World Series, but it's the ultimate prize in baseball. And the ball was hit on the ground, and Bill Buckner, he scooped it up in his glove and started running towards first base, but he dropped the ball. He bobbled. We call it, we say, they say he bobbled it. And uh, he bobbled. He lost control of the ball, and the runner was safe. And the opposing team later got a hit and scored a few runs, a few runs being being points in baseball, and the Boston Red Sox lost. And um, there was a curse, in fact, um, many, many years before, Babe Ruth, who was one of the greatest baseball players ever, a great home run hitter, had said that the Boston Red Sox will never win the World Series again. And, uh, and then this happened, and they were so close, and then this, what they call the Buckner bobble, when Bill Buckner lost control of the ball, they lost, and a lot of people felt that it was Babe Ruth's curse that caused the Boston Red Sox to lose, and they lost the World Series. Um, however, since then, just about four years ago, the Boston Red Sox did go ahead and win the World Series. They managed to break the curse of um, that Babe Ruth put on the team, and uh, they won the World Series. But that bobble and that losing, he lost the ball, he dropped the ball, Bill Buckner, in whatever year that was, in the early, maybe around 1970 or so, um, was quite famous. So a lot of the fans say, Right when that happened, they can say, oh, they imagine they would have said, if only he hadn't dropped the ball. Mm. 
There, there you go. A little bit, a little baseball story for you. He, br- uh, well, I broke the glass. If only I hadn't broken the glass. I fell down the stairs. If only I hadn't fallen down the stairs. I forgot her name. If only I hadn't forgotten her name. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, if only, if only. Okay. Now, I'm not particularly over the moon about this next part, this little review. I only spent 30 seconds on it in the last class, but it's not the most important thing that we're going to see today. But we have this structure to be over the moon, to be estar loco de contento con algo. We're over the moon with something. I, you were, I was over the moon when Spain won the Euro Cup. I was over the moon in 1993 when my favorite hockey team, the Montreal Canadiens, won the Stanley Cup, which is the holy grail of trophies for uh, for uh, hockey teams. And um, I will be over the moon if if the Canadian national team, la selección, the national team, we say in English, wins the um, the gold medal in hockey in the Winter Olympics. Because for me, that's the biggest thing. It's the most important sport is ice hockey for me, hockey. And uh, I'll be over the moon if my team, the Montreal Canadiens, win. I'll be very, very excited. I'll be over the moon. So to be over the moon, to be very excited. Okay? Expression of the day. Well, yes, it is time for our expression of the day. The expression of the day today is... He could eat a horse, or a uh, subject could eat a horse. Un caballo. Un caballo entero? Pues sí. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. Give me the biggest meal you've got because I could eat a horse right now. I'm starving. I am completely starving. I'm very, very hungry. I'm so hungry, I could eat a horse. This is quite a common saying. Quite a common expression to say that someone is very, very hungry. He could eat a horse. I could eat a horse to be able to eat a horse. Okay. He could eat a horse. That's a good one. I I like that. You know, it's an interesting expression because it's very common. Mm -hmm. We're using, um, we, we use that quite often. He could eat a horse. Okay, now, moving on. Moving on, we have someone, for example, who's making a lot of noise. Oh, I wish he would shut up. I wish he would. And a little bit more with I wish. We keep coming back to this structure, I wish. I wish we would finish with this structure, but I wish. I wish he would be quiet. He's making a lot of noise. Él está haciendo mucho ruido. Ojalá se callara. I wish he would shut up. Ojalá no hiciera tanto tanto ruido. I wish he wouldn't make so much noise. I wish he wouldn't make so much noise. Now, she's very slow. I wish she would hurry up. I wish she would. I wish she would. I wish. And then the second subject, would, and the verb. I wish she would be quiet. I wish she would. I wish she would be quiet. He's not helping me. Well, I wish he would help me. I wish he would help me. I would really appreciate his help. I wish... He would help me. They're not trying very hard. So, give me the structure out loud. En voz alta, en casa. Out loud, with me. Come on. They're not trying very hard. I wish they would try hard. Or I wish they would try harder. He's eating too much. I wish he wouldn't eat so much. He's running the machine. He's not supposed to be running the machine. I wish he wouldn't. Run the machine. He's not solving the problem. I wish he would solve the problem. Yeah, I wish he would solve the problem. 
He's not working very hard. Well, I wish he would work hard. I wish he would work hard. I wish he would work hard. All right, very good. Vocabulary of the day. All right, yes, it's time now for our vocabulary of the day. That's right, our five words of vocabulary. Para hacerse. To look alike. To look alike. Two years ago, I had I had uh, two girls who who were twin sisters in a class, and they looked so much alike. I sometimes confused them, and I felt bad after even a few months. I I, I still called one by the by the wrong name because they looked so much alike. Ooh, and I said, "Sorry, you look so much alike." And they said, "Yes, I know. Or, yes, we know. We look a lot alike. To look alike para hacerse intimidad." Privacy, privacy, intimidad, privacy, maltratar, to mistreat, maltratar is to mistreat, mm. don't mistreat your friends or loved ones, don't mistreat people, if you mistreat people, they will, they will mistreat you, right, if you want to be treated well, you have to treat others well. The golden rule, right? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, which is kind of old English, unto. We don't normally, we don't use that anymore. But basically it means treat people well or treat people the way you want to be treated with respect, right? Sociedad anónima. Corporation. 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 Escultura. Escultura. Sculpture. Sculpture. Here we have the T-U sound. Chu, chu. Sculpture. Sculpture. Mm. I've never made a sculpture. I would like to make a sculpture sometime. A sculpture. Sculpture. All right. Okay, now moving on to the last thing we're going to do today, which is one more translation list. Translation. Yes, it is time for a little bit more translation. Translation today, we have 12 sentences. Here we are in list number nine. So I will read the sentence in Spanish, and I'd like you to translate it en voz alta, out loud, in English, okay? We're getting into some more challenging structures here. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready at home? Are you sure? Okay, good. Okay, because I'm ready. Let's get started. La formación es una preocupación continua en esta compañía. La formación. ¿Cómo se dice eso? La formación. Training. Training. Training is an ongoing concern in this company. Training is an ongoing concern in this company. An ongoing concern. Una preocupación continua. Training is an ongoing concern in this company. Very good. Number two. Hay bastantes pedidos nuevos. There are. Quite a few new orders. There are quite a few new orders. Bastantes. There are quite a few new orders. Number three. Adivina quién va a convocar la reunión. Adivina. Guess. Guess. Guess who's. Guess who is. Pero con la contracción, guess who's going to call the meeting? Guess who's going to call the meeting? Number four. Tengo intención de demandarles. I intend to sue them. I intend to sue them. I intend to sue them. Yes. Demandarles, to sue them. I intend to sue. Demandar, to sue. I intend to sue. Tengo intención. I intend. 
We don't say, I have the intention. No, 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 no. I, I intend to sue them. Number five, guárdalo por si acaso. Keep it, just in case. Por si acaso, just in case. Keep it, just in case. Keep it, just in case. Number six, nunca sabes cuándo te puede hacer falta. You never know. You never know. Nunca, nunca sabes. You never know when you may need it. You never know when you may need it. Number seven. Si bajas el precio, ganarás cuota de mercado. If you lower the price, you'll gain market share. Yes. If you lower the price, you'll gain market share. Yes. Ganarás cuota de mercado. You'll gain market share. Share is like a portion, right? You'll gain market share. Number eight. ¿Cómo se pronuncia esto? How do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce this? How do you pronounce this? Number nine. Te voy a cobrar la mano de obra. I'm going to charge you for the labor. Mano de obra, labor. Cobrar, to charge. I'm going to charge you. I'm going to charge you for the labor. Te voy a cobrar la mano de obra. I'm going to charge you for the labor. For the labor. Or simply, for labor. I'm going to charge you for labor. Cobrar la mano de obra. I'm going to charge you for labor. For the labor is okay. Number 10. Esto implicará a más gente de lo que crees. This will involve more people than you think. This will involve more people than you think. A más gente de lo que crees. This will involve more people than you think. Than, with the end, than you think. Tropecé con él en un kiosco. I ran into him at a newsstand. Tropecer con alguien, to run into someone. I ran into him at a newsstand. And number 12. Si pulsas ese botón, bajaremos. If you press that button, we'll go down. Bajaremos. We'll, we'll we will, con contracted, we'll go down. If you press that button, we'll go down. Very good. Good job. These sentences are getting a bit more difficult. But make sure you're following along, paying attention, practicing out loud. Always out loud at home, okay? Good job today. Well done. You should be proud of your effort. Make sure you're following along. And remember to listen again at the same time tomorrow, and we will have more. We'll review these sentences, and we will practice more grammar, and we'll be doing, uh, we will be regularly adding new translation lists to test you and to develop to improve agility with key structures. I'm completely out of time. Thank you so much for joining me, but I'll see you soon. My name is Kyle. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>